let's start get started um we are planning half an hour content or so and have of course time for q a anyways put your question in the q a uh, section the chat is for your internal conversation uh, if you have questions put it in the q a so welcome to our webinar series agile insights tools today with the topic meaningful attention versus empty behavior how to implement a new impact focused paradigm and as a guest we have today as a presenter philip reiter who is uh substituting lisa Riese because uh she needed uh to join another very urgent uh issue so but uh, philip is ceo and partner and probably a pretty good substitute to her so welcome philip thank you frank and yeah not really a good substitute because definitely lisa's speciality and also her title represents the well-being in in her research, she does her PhD in this topic, so I I can only try to work. <laughs> Anyways, if if you get intrigued, and I I think the content will will be very helpful for that, reach out to Philip and to Lisa, and they will take time for sure. So yeah. Before we get started, let me give you the context. Uh, again, this webinar, uh, Agile Insights. Uh, has has been launched because um spark uh, the spark platform which uh i square launched is uh aggregating insights tools that are, are high-end tools that can be applied in a standardized and agile way uh my name is frank buckler from supra tools and we are a strategic collaborator of i square and we host this webinar series because uh, Super Tools, which is a price pricing platform, fits very well in the uh, concept of Spark platform. And uh, this being said, again, if you wonder who the hell is I Square, I Square is a philosophically oriented, nay, psychologically oriented, internationally active <laughs> market research institute quite large 74 uh, uh, employees uh, active at three continents of course born in berlin but uh, active in, in in europe us and asia and it's really leading with a range of implicit research tools so again my name is frank buckler co-founder of supra tools uh, it's an agile pricing testing platform established last year as a daughter from success drivers company and it is uh, leading with exceptional valid uh validity enabling by implicit research and causal machine learning this being said uh i hand over the topic to you philip uh take it away thank you so much and thank you so much also for dialing in to this interesting topic of yeah attention research in, in general and our special add on the meaningful attention. And like Frank already said, we are a psychologically orientated company, but we do approach also a philosophical um, topic almost today because the topic meaningful is, of course, um, can be triangulated from, from various perspectives. And that's what we'll, what we'll do today. And I'll give you a bit of a background of why we think this is an important topic and why it is important for our clients in media, FMCG and many various other um, fields. And what we what we do help our clients with as consultants and researchers is try to understand the human attention better. And it has always been in our focus. And of course, in the last years, it has been um, very important topic this year, especially as well in the US again with the ARF series of attention definition, but we'll not focus so much today on the definition of attention, but go a bit beyond, maybe a bit 
deeper. And I totally welcome you as well to, to throw in questions or comments and you might as well go ahead, Frank, and just jump in anytime. Yeah, the background why we do this is also that I don't forget I put this slide here. We'll all invite you afterwards when we send you an email to this conference. It's in Berlin in September. You're definitely welcome to join and ask for a, a ticket and we will for sure send you the LinkedIn link for the online, the virtual event, either way that might be easier. And you see Lisa right here in the middle, so you also get a chance to listen to her as she will speak about this, this topic in a slightly different perspective from the product and the user experience um, perspective. If you design products, what does it mean to design for well-being and meaningful attention? Okay, yeah, I can I can uh, really uh, um, applaud on that because I, I joined the conference last last year, uh, and it's really really a cozy conference at your office um, with uh, really great conversation you you get with 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 your network. So uh, if you if you want can make it to Berlin, uh, don't miss it. Definitely recommend it. It's at the river and it's a nice nice setup. Yeah, and the the background and the term attention economy probably most of you have have heard about it, and it started in the nineteen eighties um, where researchers um, defined this and. Um, the, in this information and attention economy, it was clear that companies, you know, invest tremendous resource to try to understand what resonates with humans and consumers and what drives their decision making. And on the basis of all of this, or the heart of all of these question, is the the attention. And um, so, um, what causes a consumer to pay attention? to advertisement or product um, is, of course, the prerequisite for any further processing in, in our brain. And so we have a psychologist also looked at this a whole lot and have, um, like myself as a, as a psychologist, have um, done tremendous amount of research on it and, yeah, kind of have always seen this process as a very you know neural network approach and sometimes also looked at it from a very effectiveness focused point and that's what will what will go a bit beyond today and the literature um, that has focused on attention goes back even now here to the 80s um i don't i didn't I didn't put Mr. Simon on this slide now, sorry. But it's a it's a very important topic um, from the economical side. And like you also know, the psychologists who got a Nobel Prize, they are very rarely pure psychologists, but they are actually economists that have um, also studied psychology. And this is a bit in this way also how attention is, is defined here. So Mr. Frank, Georg Frank here argues that attention is limited and individuals only have a finite amount of attentional capacity at time. And it's also something very personal and subjective. So our attention is also made of our memories and of our interests. And so it's, it's, it's now a, we are able to predict attention very well, but it's still it's still also subjective, and it's a cognitive process. So, it happens in our brain, it selects, it filters, and focuses on specific aspects, and it determines our perception and consciousness and everything that comes afterwards. What we remember, right? So, it's something that happens very early, and it's very, you can also say, preconscious, and. Um, Frank, in this case, not, not you, but Mr. Frank, um, defined also some other parts of attention in information society, which I just wanted to kind of cite here. It's from an interview. So he says information goods differ from consumer goods, and you always need attention to process information goods. Like you cannot just, you know, put it somewhere. They always need attention. And in that way, he says attention is also very similar to money, because money is also very scarce resource. Um, you can buy all kinds of things with it. And so even for people who have 
definitely enough money, they still feel like they it's scarce. And there's a connection between money and currency and attention. And in this philosophical approach, um, he actually said that's a psychic energy like that I can direct. And it's also something very important in the interpersonal exchange, like getting your attention now, of course, gives me a lot and talking to people and um, having this form of income in a, in a economical way is actually a necessity for us humans. We're social beings. So attention is not only a currency, but it's also a social currency. Receiving attention and giving attention is I importance for our brain and of course our development and that's actually why he said it's necessary for survival even and there is there is a reason why he says it and um so the social aspect will come back later too when we look at some advertisements and in the beginning of the year we um were in new york and had a small conference and we um, recorded this eye tracking video i think you have to kind of click to the next slide and then it will start yeah and so it's a bit jumpy now when it's streamed. You can guess where it is. And it's it's an example of walking over the Times Square in New York, which is, of course, full of advertisement, full of triggers. And um, this person who, who wore this eye tracker, it's like a set of glasses, definitely had problems remembering everything that happened here. And of, co of course, he or she never remembered how many fixation stops he had while walking like these couple of minutes over Times Square. And you see when the eye stops here, the fixation count will always um, add a number. So there were over 600 fixations already in this part. And we use these videos to make it clear like how much of our attention is not consciously processed and not consciously remembered. If we look at these videos, people will re maybe remember that this was their video and not the video of somebody else, but it is it is very tricky to, to do that. And now as a bit of a, of a game, we can also ask you to reflect on what would be meaningful to you. And in the way of defining meaningful, of course, this could be various different things and maybe we'll restrict it a bit more to, to communication that comes from a brand, so an advertisement. And an advertisement, for example, can be meaningful in many different ways and could be social, like we already said, but it could also be meaningful in other ways. And um, a product could even be meaningful. So if you think of products that you buy, you might reflect on what does it mean? Where does the money go to? Who else do I influence by consuming this product? So there's many different facets and layers to, to this. And maybe we'll, we'll just show a couple of examples here, Frank. I don't know which one resonates the best with you. So meaningful attention can be diverse. So in a, in a way here, um, Dove and their their campaign um, Real Beauty. They started these topics very early to show models that are not the typical models that we would expect. So um, that's a bold move of them. And meaningful attention can be political. I don't know if all of you would recognize Colin Kaepernick as an NFL player. Do you know him, Frank? As a guy who kneed down. On yeah. The field. yeah, he kneeled down when it um, was the the racial uprising. I think it was two years ago in the in the U.S. And he was a great quarterback playing for the I don't know. I think in California, also like at the Super Bowl. And his career kind of ended at that point. So Nike picked this up and encouraged his idea. And yeah, he will probably never play football again. Just because the NFL said, like, nah, it's not a good idea to be so political. Um, this is a German example of, of this week, actually, a German um, grocery store um, put the real cost of the product for climate, water, and health issues and tried to put them all in the product. Say, okay, this is actually a bit more expensive. Other products that contain a lot of meat or have to travel far they should be much more expensive than they really are. So they wanted to start a debate of um, 
uh, of ecological, um, yeah, like a discussion. And so they will not raise these real costs, but um, it's still it's still something that they wanted to talk about. Patagonia, of course, they are a, a special brand, and this is an old ad, I think, from over ten years ago, and so they contradicted. The consumers put this in Time magazine and said, "Hey, don't buy this jacket. Like, think about if you need it. Really, right? You shouldn't just consume stuff for the sake of it. Like, save the planet and reduce, repair. If you then really need it, then you should buy it. Of course, they are also a brand that wants to sell. And yeah, no, that's fine. And the the social aspect, which is part of." most advertisements and most of our communication since we're such social beings and our brain is so made for social interaction yeah ikea um actually have this this campaign and i forgot the name how they call it it's it's basically for these social moments and it's their whole campaign focusing on these special moments you know the kid is getting up it's meeting grandpa and and of course the products they are here as well but the the focus is on the social interaction and the fun and um yeah i mean it, looking at our brain we wouldn't even exist if we would not be social beings and these um, interesting theories how our brain developed um because of our social surroundings and communication and language is certainly very interesting. And this is what our brain likes the most, right? To, to see to see other other people. And in that way it's also also meaningful because yeah, the wonderful everyday, that's the campaign name. Th that's also. what I that stick stuck stuck out for me at the Times Square movie. The person mostly looked at other people, right? There were thousands of big advertising, but basically person looked at other people. Yeah, that's what we that's what we do. Also in the supermarket when we measure the human attention, the the other people and their cards and shopping are definitely more interesting than signs or you know stoppers and these these things. Yeah, it's something that is intertwined in, in our brain for sure. And if we if we um, I reflect a bit why we started this discussion internally, why attention should also have meaning, we also realized that us as researchers, we focused a lot as well, you know, on measuring milliseconds, fixations, and not thinking about was this actually a, a fixation or attention of a, of a consumer, you know, that, that actually had a good effect or not. We were just happy to capture the, the attention and that's how how it still is at some in in some business and of course since it's such a scarce resource and currency it's something we wanted to reflect also as psychologists and um yeah on the next slide i just put together a couple um of of points yeah why it's a fragile and also valuable resource and fragile means that in a way us as humans and um the the consumers as well they we have a difficult time in you know allocating our attention and it's a very automated process and basically our attention is not made for the information society and the internet and social media because we will have to look at things that trigger us and it's very difficult to to step away and not look at notifications and not look at at ads that distract us and so it's a valuable resource and if you go to the next slide thanks for um yeah we discussed ethics as researchers as market researchers you know we're following codexes as isoma rdm b4m rf and we are also iso certified company where we definitely have to not only follow the data protection part but also respect the human experience and treating you know customers and human beings as a holistic being and not see them as a test person, you know, or or just a subject or, or a number. And we also realized in the last years 
that not only these big brands, but also smaller brands change their code of conduct and their CSR, their corporate social responsibility, not because only the EU made them to do it. The law changed this year um, that you will have to be conscious about all of the producing countries, you know, where your products come from. And so the companies and the advertisement, the communication is much more ethically and um, much more conscious about these things. And this is also the case for the mental health and well-being discussion, which is more Lisa's focus. And she'll talk about that at the Mimex, but I'm just gonna dive into this very quickly, what we mean with mental health and well-being to understand why Facebook and Google, and in this case, Tristan Harris um, from Google actually started this discussion. And there's this social dilemma on Netflix on the lower left hand here, if you'd like to watch it. It's an interesting um, movie about this topic. And they also um, started this center of humane technology where the question is how we can reverse this attention crisis and actually realigning technology with human's best interest. And that's something that Facebook, Google, and all the other big players already took under account. And if you go to the next slide, I think we have some screenshots. Yeah, so time well spent. This specific um, topic is shaping to be the next big debate. You can see it's from 2018. So the debate started already a couple of years ago. And I think Zuckerberg on the next slide and also um, I say that it's it is very important for them, you know, to to discuss how time well spent on their platforms can be measured. You know, to say it's connected, to bring people closer. That's a good example. Or on the other platform, in the next screenshot, it's basically no. I, we took that out. I think that was from Twitter. <laughs> so I think we deleted that one. And so the question now is how we define this meaningful attention and how can we measure, right, as, as, as researchers. And so the idea here, and yeah, please, please go on, Frank, um, is, is to define it in a way that goes beyond the simple measurement of attention. And there are, of course, concepts that have been around for a long time. And I'm sure, Frank, you doing implicit research, you also have some measurement concepts in mind, like engagement or can also say quality of attention. This could be something, but it's it's still very, very tricky to measure. First of all, it's individual and measuring attention has always been um, technically advanced and also expensive. So for us, it is it is an important dimension that we want to add to the discussion, but also to the prediction and to the to the um, yeah, basically to the to the benchmarks that we that we all value so much. And if you if we yeah define it like how we did it in the in the title and try to look at the opposite. Um, what meaningless attention is, that's a bit, it's a bit easier. And maybe we can even, even start with that because a lot of our attention um, can be, not fine, we can go, go ahead, can be differentiated on this dimension between meaningful and meaningless. And I think we have three um, dimensions or on this slide. So we can say there's worthless and valuable attention. And so worthless attention would be the attention that did not touch me and could also be that it touched me in a negative way and not in a positive way. And that's something we never really differentiated. We said, okay, somebody's engaged, somebody remembers it. How we achieve this doesn't matter. Um, it's inconsequential versus impactful. This goes in the same direction. Something impactful will trigger something for me, maybe not for maybe not for you. And since memory and emotions are so closely intertwined in human nature, will probably also trigger an emotion. Wasted time versus well spent is a is a good topic. I mean, we all like to um, also waste some time on on social media or watch something to also distract ourselves. That's totally totally fine. 
and it's nothing it's nothing bad at all and um, time well spent in this definition is then something higher and something even more meaningful and it's not something we can do all day and like but we can strive for it so it's a bit something it's a bit more more conscious on the other hand if we go to the next slide then um we can see some examples for meaningless attention and we all know these um yeah they're more superficial or shallow short-term gratifications um maybe not as deep or don't have as much value um, results from maximizing user attention and technology design. This goes definitely to the to the product design where purely gathering, capturing attention, you know, having addictive measure or mechanisms in there, maybe even then yeah, these can lead to harmful effects in various life domains. This is what Tristan Harris from Google definitely um, um, put up and for for discussion and yeah compromises the user's best interest this goes also a bit more into this direction leads to a loss of sense of control and time yeah we all have been there when we have like spent too much time on something and afterwards felt like a feeling of regret it could conflict or distract from my long-term goals and is more associated with path passive rather than active user behavior. And these are defined not by us solely, but also by um, by the critiques that um, you're happy to to watch in this Netflix series as well. And um, if we if we go on and look at the next slide, so what our goal is with this discussion is to find better ways how we can identify attention you know that is important to individuals that is directed also towards something good and good in this way could be have different meanings um, it's more focused attention less as distracted attention as positively engaged can create positive long-term value even real-time impact and then let's see if there's more to come it's effective in a way and if communication if is effective the way how we would measure it is say there is actually long-term customer retention and also also a way of, of memory and adding consumer interest and values to the pure attention measurement that we that we have discussed before is is the goal in this case and um it's of course a challenge to do and it's also challenging to to do this in the various different fields where our clients are in. If you buy an FMCG product like a shampoo, meaning full attention might mean something else in comparison um, if you have a, a different product. And there's also maybe product or advertisements where it's, where it's even at the first point impossible to think about this. But if you think of any product range and if you go to the supermarket, at least there is different levels of, of meaningful communication, even with on the packs. And I don't know, I mean, I just have this drink here right next to me, it's, by, it's an incident. And if I would just look at the aspects that could be meaningful, so I have WWF here, I have my nutrition score, I have vegan. Uh, there's like already eight different triggers just on this pack where I could say, yes, theoretically, this could be defined as something meaningful being communicated to. And the producer of this brand, trying to, to prove that this is not only about um, selling a you know a good tasting product, but there's more to this. So in a, in a way, if you think about it, there is a lot of these little, little aspects in, in communication. And um, I don't have a preview now, so let's see what slide is next. <laughs> it's uh, here, and I forgot uh, that combined system zero oh, yeah. and two. What does yeah, it that's... mean? That's a good good point. System one and two, most of most of you have heard before. It's about um, our information processing system, and the theory here is that the two factor system or the two processing ways. One is very fast and implicit, and let's say pre conscious and automated. That's system one, and system two is the the one that's actually conscious when I start my brain and think about things or do math and reflect on something or I have to learn something. And 
what we did with system zero is say these very early attention um, processes where my eye just jumps in saccades and um, processes information and selects information almost without me um, yeah, controlling this, we said this is system zero because it's it's what in our world matters the most. Of course, there's also information processing that does not need my eyes, but we said it's so important for our research to understand how humans um, behave and navigate that we said system zero is the, the very early processes in, in attention, then we have system one, the implicit, and system two, the explicit. And in, in your research focus, Frank, the, the implicit part um, where also the emotions come in and your gut feeling would probably be more in system system one then. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll talk about that as well a bit. And, and I have uh, already an idea for system three now yeah go ahead or is it is it still is it secret? no that that's basically you know uh, the generative ai the lmms LMMs, mm -hmm. basically machines able to think it's basically an enlargement of our system two yeah it's it's actually but it's different and it helps us but it's it will be system three that's an idea that came up yeah that's a good good point and it's a good good addition yeah we also talked about system three but we never looked at it from this this perspective yeah, yeah i like it though no, that's a good a good point yeah and these these three systems they also enable us to look at different methods to combine them we don't always need all three of them sometimes we could be happy with system three for example we could just ask the llm for prediction and um, for answers, sometimes it's, of course, a good idea to talk to the consumers and say, why would this be important? Why would this be meaningful to you? To understand this, we look at system one, we would try to measure your emotions, your reactions, if you see something, if it triggers you, and that we measure by facial expressions or even pupil dilations. And there's different, different neural measures we can do in the lab or with people just sitting in front of a webcam at home and system zero for us it's mainly the attention measurement not only but um but mainly and we'll have some examples here as well the viewability is also an important factor if we see how people stop while scrolling and the implicit <clears throat> measurement in system one here you already we already mentioned we are looking at reaction time based tools where we don't only rely on questionnaires, but actually if people have to think about if a word fits to a brand or not. And this is more, it's more of a playful game to, to measure something like our gut feelings. And then of course, in the explicit, it's easier. On the eye tracking side, we have many different ways and methods that I don't want to go in here too deeply. If you're interested, we can, we can do that afterwards. You can look at our website. And these are examples now, I think you have to click for the next slide to let them play, where um, you can see that attention is fragmented. Our eye jumps about like two or three times per second, and we're able to, to like look at information really fast. And this eye tracking has been recorded through the front camera of a smartphone, either iOS or Android, doesn't matter. So we do not need eye trackers. For this, we can just ask people to turn on their camera and measure attention and emotion through these great devices that we have. And um, so for us, that's very interesting to understand how context, in this case, Insta or YouTube influences also even mm, our attention and how communication should be set up so that users understand it within a few seconds so that it can actually be meaningful and not just be clicked away and for this in our research idea it's highly important to have very realistic setups if we measure attention and want to understand you know how people behave in their natural environment there's no need to do that in a lab or very controlled way so so we need to to have great research tools and all of our research tools here they're browser based so we could emulate any research question on media on shops and also on ux so that's that's part of the 
need for measurement um, to understand human natural experience. So people are invited, then they have a experience on Facebook or on different um, simulated parts. So it's also data privacy safe. We don't want to look at people's individual feeds, of course, and afterwards we question and um, and also talk to the people and see how they liked something. But this realistic approach of, of showing um, media is, is for us an important part. And I think we have some benchmarks here of um, portions of advertisement or media, or also this part where we say like, average attention only gets about a um, couple of couple of seconds and these 2.5 seconds in the previous slides they are very important because that's that's in the regression curve where it becomes clear that the re the recall or the recognition what people remember is influenced by these very few seconds in the beginning and so the viewing time you can you can tell here is rather short and the first 2.5 seconds count very much this is where the greatest effect is actually created and afterwards it kind of flattens so the recognition um, doesn't have a high impact anymore and um, longer viewing time doesn't always lead to more memory it depends now here on, on youtube on the right hand side people looked at this ad for example longer but have a little bit of a lower recognition than um, on the Instagram ad. And so this is also then the question, yeah, was this a meaningful ad for this individual person? Was it targeted well? And so measuring these aspects is, is important to understand human behavior better than for us. And so we're then able to predict also shopping better. And in this special case or um, product we actually show advertisement first and then have people um, look at products to also be able to understand and predict their shopping behavior better and in this flow we try to yeah, represent all of these all of these touch points the questionnaire is and the the recall is of course highly important so we do not just rely on behavioral data and yeah so the key key takeaways for meaningful attention can say that we try to go beyond simply capturing attention also think about how we we call for attention or what is the goal we want to tie meaning to this goal and not be shallow about our communication um, we need to add meaningful metrics so we need to think about how to not only measure engagement but also think about what type of engagement was it and what meaningful means to different groups and segments of people. And yeah, measure implicit and explicit, like with, with your tools, Frank. Well, let, let me let me rephrase what I understood and please let me know if, if I got it right. So attention is yeah, attention is basically uh the user's anticipation whether uh, that this may be useful right because because this is why unconsciously they have attention and meaningful means it turns out it should turn out later on to be the case right the anticipation should should happen it should be valuable if not both sides will suffer yeah the the marketer as well as the customer will regret it right so this yeah. means uh, that's that I got. So that's why meaningful means, hey, uh, satisfy the anticipation of the customer, because this will be for a win-win situation for everyone. Yeah, I think a win-win situation is definitely good, good metaphor for this. And yeah, since the meaningful aspect of it can be, of course, very individual, it's important for the marketer to really understand their segment and their target group very well because otherwise it's very difficult to com communicate meaningful and you just have to try to to do it generally but um, already just thinking about it and reflecting it what a lot of brands and also digital tools already do um, 
helps a lot. Like, I mean, we talked yesterday about Google Photos and we all know these photo aspects and the AI tools to help to generate reviews of nice memories, you know, and collages and little movies, it helps us. And it, sometimes it goes far back, like a year or two, and sometimes it's just something like a week ago. And it's actually, it creates meaningful memories that I can share with others. And that's a product that um, resembles this meaningful attention very easily because um, they actually tried to design for it. And in product design and user experience, really, there is a, a whole model of how, how we can um, design for well-being. And I think Lisa would have explained it better. It's the PERMA model. It's you design for positive emotion, engagement, relationship, meaning and accomplishment. And that's a challenge to design a product that can fulfill these dimensions. And that's of course different, like a shampoo I couldn't design for engagement, positive relationship, meaning and accomplishment that easily. But of course um, in, in product design, it's a, it's a very com and powerful um, um, yeah, goal to, to design for meaningfulness and well-being. So another reason to join the Memix conference in uh, one month. Definitely, yeah, and I hope you'll also also make it. Make it. I will be me. there. I will be there. We're definitely looking forward to it, and also looking forward for a, a little boat ride where we we'll have have boats at the river, so you can also have a bit of a touristic experience of of Berlin and. Um, some some food trucks sold for the evening as well but the whole agenda you can also find on the mimicsconference.com cool so we, we are running out of time uh if you have uh questions shoot it now otherwise we wrap up uh, and hope to see you in berlin uh of course um thank you again for being here and uh if you have questions, reach out to Philip right at isquare.com. Or if you have questions regarding mm -hmm. Supra tools, reach out to me, Frank at Supra tools. There is one thing in a chat. Um, meaningful attention for me means the right codes in an ad or product package A, receive sufficient attention. And B, the codes activate the right associations. So yeah. sounds sounds uh, sounds good, huh? Which is a good point. Yeah, of course, communication is difficult enough, and that it's actually correctly understood is already is already great. Like if the users, the consumers, don't get it wrong <laughs> and get the wrong associations, and then of course defining these goals that's also what we help our clients to say like okay what is of course what is the goal of this communication and and really start again from the end what do i want to achieve like and this can be on different dimensions from social to ecological aspects to make something meaningful for a human being and yeah these codes should activate the right associations that's the fair that's a good point so, Philip, I take this as a last word, as a final amen. And uh, thanks again for taking uh, the role for, for Lisa. Uh, thanks was very for, insightful. for having. And I wish you guys all a, a great weekend, Wolfgang and Frank as well. And then I hope to see you and a couple of you as well in September then. Wonderful. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.